Hellblazers. Welcome back to the Newcastle Crew, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things related to the character of John Constantine. I am Willis, and joining me as always is... Hey everyone, it's Phil. Up for discussion today is part three of our New 52 Journey of John Constantine. The Big Smoke, part three of the first arc, The Spark and the Flame. That's that's such an ironic title for Constantine, The Big Smoke. I know. And I just want to say The Riddling Butcher. That is a interesting name choice for a villain. Yeah, especially like a, like a demon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're all over the place, kind of, sort of. Um, so he's finally back in London, and uh, some strange things are going on. Yeah, and we basically find out why he's not living in London, because he's cursed if he's there. Exactly. The whole city's trying to kill him. <laughs> Making out with a married woman. Oh, Julia. G- Ginger Julia. Yeah. She's like, um, she's something changed about her, or whatever. She's not fearless anymore. And it's just like, uh, this is like kind of a weird way to open up the story. <laughs> it's, Yeah. But I mean, this thing, I mean, it kind of goes in the odd territory almost right away. Yeah, but like, all, all hell literally doesn't break loose till they like get, like, they're still trying to get out of London, and when they do, it's still like a hellscape. So it's just like, yikes. And like, John keeps trying to find like a way out, and they keep getting like interrupted by like these like entities and misplaced body parts. And I'm like, yes! And yes, s- give it to me! <laughs> <laughs> Creepy, strange, macabre, gruesome, yes! And the dude offers John a noose, and it's just like, what? Oh my god, this is great. I love this. It's just like, okay. <laughs> Autoerotic asphyxiation, okay. You'd think that'd be something he'd be into. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, you know what this uh, artwork reminded me of? Hmm. Tales from the Crypt. Which, by the way, random nonsense, sorry, I know it's not Wade's World, is getting a revival, and M. Night Shyamalan's gonna be... Did you hear that? Yeah, I thought I heard. I heard a. Yeah, I didn't hear like a lot of the details, but yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, I'm hyped. That was my jam on Friday nights when I was like seven, I think. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have HBO, so I had to go down to my buddy's house and watch it. So yeah, but, yeah, this is giving me all kinds of tales from the crypt vibes, and I loved it. They're like asking him like where it is or whatever when they finally catch up to him. Like he was in that. Uh, like they were doing a little spell to see where it was. And they found him. And it's just like, uh, Phil, so looking through that lens. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, because his eyes are the lenses. Oh, that was great. Mm-hmm. It was kind of one of those, the calls coming from inside the house moments. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, that was John's plan. And he's, like, watching the damn demon. And then he, like, uh, there's, like, this magical blast into Mr. E's chest. And I'm just mm-hmm. It was weird. He took he took he took his eyes, and I was just like, "Ooh, this is getting a little too much." And then, like, the demon senses uh, Sargon's relationship to John Sargent or whatever, mm-hmm. who was first trapped in the labyrinth. And I'm just like, "Okay, this just got really dark." <laughs> like everybody is Chris's friend, apparently. Like Chris is a super popular guy. <laughs> it's yes. Uh. T- just, I don't know, just reading this issue, you would think, like, demons are all, st- or even sorcerers are just stupid. Well, see, John always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody give, everybody doesn't blink an eye because Batman has a contingency plan. John has a contingency plan, too. They're like, he this has guy, a plan A through Z. This, this guy looks half homeless. He has, a, he has like, contingency plans. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. He's like, hey, he, let a person judge a book by its cover. Oh my god, you know what just popped in my head? He's like, he's like the supernatural Columbo. <gasps> Trench coat and all. <laughs> yeah, you know, you look at him, you don't expect much, and then it's just like, boom. Problem solved. Can that be our tagline? <laughs> the supernatural Columbo. He's the supernatural Columbo. <laughs> hey, we throw it in every week. <laughs> oh, you know, who, oh, you know who loves Columbo? Who's gonna love this now? Charlie Usser. Oh! <laughs> That's how we're gonna bill it. Like, if you love... If you love Columbo, boy, do we have a podcast for you. <laughs> if you if you love Columbo, but you love the supernatural and demons, <laughs> we have the perfect podcast for you. Oh, that's great. 
But then John like gets back to his little apartment in New York finally. He mm-hmm. places the doll among all the other little artifacts. And he's just kind of like sitting there. Like wallowing in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he pulls out the machete. Yeah. So it's just like... That's kind of bleak. <laughs> all this stuff's gonna converge on him eventually. I mean, yeah. I mean, he... F- is she, what, three? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's Constantine. I mean, he he eventually always finds his way out of these situations, but it never really ends with, like, a happy ending. Yeah. And I like, that's another thing that I really like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my favorite thing about this book, this time around, was the storytelling. I felt, I felt like the pacing was on point. Mm-hmm. What about you? Did you have a favorite thing about this book? Um, I don't know. I like he basic. I mean, it's 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 a thing with Constantine a lot, but he basically uh sets the uh the demon against the sorcerers, and again another another like classic Constantine moment, but uh. I was just waiting for the demon to pop in and be like, riddle me this. Because it's like... He's the... <laughs> Whoa! He's the riddling whatever, and I don't think he's team he, one riddle popped out of his mouth, did it? <laughs> yeah! But I'm like, you call him the riddling whatever, and I don't think he, he, he posed one riddle to anyone. Maybe riddling is like a um, British slang term or something? No. <laughs> I don't know. I have to look into that one. <laughs> uh, I love how we reveal why he can't really be in London. I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. I love how he's like, my real problem is that London will kill me long before anyone else gets the chance. Not the people, the city. <laughs> oh, I know, and it did damage because, like, at the end, he's like, he's having trouble hearing out of one ear, and yeah, the consequences of being human. Mm-hmm. Something we don't see a lot in comic books. Well, mainstream, like, big comic books. Yes. Which is why I liked the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck. Judge me all you want. <laughs> it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't the best, but it, it wasn't bad. Lecture was terrible, but everything else was okay. Mm-hmm. But at least he got to keep her for a while, as he was. <laughs> for a while. Anywho, <clears throat> what would you give this? Uh, oh no, what was your favorite panel? Um, probably that uh, double splash page when they're getting out of the car. Oh, I don't know. I like it when it's in the opening where he's looking at himself in the mirror. He's got the bloody nose. Mm-hmm. He's cursing London. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. another good one. Uh huh. Uh. <coughs> I think it's uh, like page 16 where it's uh, uh, the Riddling Butcher. It was like a question mark and a question mark or whatever that one. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, hash. It's like all that stuff going on. It's like old film reel and register. <laughs> it's just so, like, you know, dark, seedy, underground Monday. It hurts. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Probably, I'm. I, it still had like a classic uh, Constantine vibe. I'd probably say uh, A minus. This one's a B, as in boy plus for me. Okay. A solid outing. Uh, I just was kind of confused about the Julia thing. Yeah. Other than that, great story, great artwork. We got the ball rolling. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, yeah. So, I guess it looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion. All right. Well, if you want to uh, get a hold of us, uh, share your thoughts, uh, especially on the Justice League Dark movie, which we'll be getting to. 
Uh, email us newcastlecrew at gmail.com. Facebook is facebook.com slash Newcastle Crew Podcast. And Twitter is at Newcastle Crew. And Lilith, where can people send you riddles from a butcher? Oh, you can send me meat recipes or riddles <laughs> or anything <laughs> via at Lilith Hellfire or anywhere in the social media sphere at Adventures in FG. Please be sure to check out my blog, adventuresinfangirling.com. Please be sure to like and share those articles as well as comment. I do read and reply to all my comments. So I guess I'll see you there in the comments. As for me, you can always email me nightwingpdp at gmail.com. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at nightwingpdp. And that's it. If you don't go to your hometown because you're cursed, <laughs> mm. then you can commiserate with Constantine. But until next week, this is Newcastle Crew signing off. <laughs>